Welcome to Integrated Math 3. On this episode, Stevenson will demonstrate... Now that we've been introduced to this idea of radian measures and degrees and unit circles, I want to show you how these come together as our unit circle. Now the unit circle actually has three different, well actually it can have many different elements on it. I want to show you one of those elements and it is the degrees. So if you take your unit circle, which is centered at the origin, its radius is one, okay? We can actually look at key angle measures in all four quadrants. Now the best part about the unit circle is because of symmetry, a lot of these measures will repeat. So here's what I want you to do. So first of all, we're gonna look at the halfway point in the first quadrant and actually in each one thereafter. So put a point there. Now when you read the unit circle, you go in a counterclockwise direction. So if I start right here, I am at zero degrees. Now let's look at this angle right here. This is an exact right angle. That means if I go all the way up to here, that means I've traveled 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees. This angle right here is halfway between that. So what's half of 90 degrees? It is 45 degrees. So these are the three beginning points in quadrant one. There's two other angles that I want to introduce you into quadrant one that are important for building our unit circle. The first one is if we take this piece of the unit circle and we divide it into thirds. So what is 90 degrees divided by three? The other angle is up here. If I take two thirds of this, so if one third is 30 degrees, then two thirds is 60 degrees. I now have one, two, three, four, five, all five parts in quadrant one. So now what I want you to do is repeat those dots on all four other quadrants. Because of symmetry, because I know these numbers here, I can actually find the respectable numbers on the other side. Here's how this works. Let's start with the 90. This is zero. Here's 90. If I add one more 90, I have 180. 90 plus 180 is 270. And then if I go back one more 90, I have gone completely around the circle. So this location actually has two ways of thinking of it. It could be your beginning, zero degrees, or it could be your end after one full rotation or revolution, which is 360 degrees. Next, let's look at 45s. Now the 45 degree angle is halfway between here. Okay, so let's look over here. If I take this point and reflect over the y-axis, this angle's, um, angle that it corresponds to is this spot right here. Well, if this is 45 degrees, and it's halfway between 180 and 95, or 90, excuse me, basically all I have to do is add an additional 45 degrees to 90, and I get 135. Now let's take this point, we reflect it down here. Okay, well this is halfway between these ones right here. And remember, halfway between 90 degrees is 45. So just add 45 degrees to 180 and we get 225. Now if I take this point and reflect over the y-axis, I'm here. Or you could take the 45, reflect over the x-axis and you're here. Regardless, we're at the same location. Now again, this is halfway between these. So again, all I have to do is take 270 and add 45 degrees to it. Oh, another way I could do this, I could take 360 and subtract 45 degrees. I could do it here too. If I take 270 and subtract 45 degrees, I get this. So let's add something. So if my angle is positive, okay, I go in this direction. If my angle is negative, so positive angle, I so if I go have a positive angle, I read my circle in counterclockwise directions. If my angle is negative, I read it in a clockwise direction, so it's important to know that. So let's add 45 degrees to 270 and we get 315. So 30 degrees is 30 degrees from the x-axis. Now you could sit here and count a whole bunch of 30 degrees, but if you notice this point is reflected over the y-axis, it's right here. Okay, so let's think about this. 
if 30 degrees from the x-axis is this point, but I know this is 180 degrees if I go all the way from here, well then all I have to do is subtract 180, take away 30, and I'm right here, which is 150 degrees. Now if I take this point and reflect, now I'm in quadrant three. So I know this distance is representative of 30 degrees. So what's 30 degrees plus 180? Because now I'm going past 180 degrees. That's 210. If I take this point and reflect over the y-axis, I'm over here. Or you might see this point and reflect over the x-axis and we're here. Okay. So this angle is 30 degrees away from one complete circle, isn't it? But one complete circle is 360 degrees. So if I subtract 30, I now have 330 degrees. The last angle on here is probably going to be your most challenging one, and that's the 60 degrees. The 60 degree angle is 60 degrees from this x-axis. Now if I reflect over the y-axis, I end up over here. So if this is 60 degrees, I'm doing another 60 degrees, which is 120. Now if I reflect this over the x-axis, I'm way down here. Okay, so let's use some, some symmetry here to help us figure this out. 120 degrees is 30 more than 90, right? 60 was 30 less than 90. So this point is 30 degrees away, plus or minus, the y-axis. So let's use that down here. So this angle is before we reach 270, because remember, we're traveling in a counterclockwise direction. So I'm 30 degrees before it. So I'm gonna subtract 30 degrees from 270. I get 240. If I take this point and reflect over the y-axis, now I'm here. So this is 30 degrees past 270. So 30 degrees plus 270 is 300.